Hi everybody, uh, welcome to this video on how to install Plex Media Server on Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. What we have here is a little card reader writer. We have a little micro SD card which I'm going to insert right now for writing. We have a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B power and connected to the network. As you can see it's currently off. Alright, All right. so first up, um, what we're going to do is we're going to install it using a pre-installed image uh, produced by uh, ii2.co.za. Um, this software is available on this website. I've gone ahead and actually purchased this, so um, I'm just going to go to my downloads on my account. All of the software has been downloaded and I have it ready for us in a little software folder. So the first step is to actually go and download the, uh, the Plex Media Server image. Uh, once the Plex Media Server image is downloaded, we merely have to extract that image so that we can actually write it to our SD card. Okay, great. So we now have the image file ready for writing to the SD card. It's pretty much the same way it's done using the uh, raspberry.org images. What we need for this is a, a product called Win32 Disk Imager. And incidentally, all of these tools are also provided in the download uh, from the website. What we need to do is we need to um, select our SD card. We now need to point at the images that we've just done zipped, which is the Pi image. All right, and then we need to write it to our SD card. Okay, so let's have a look there. Yes, it's busy writing. I'm just going to pause this video until the image is written. Okay, welcome back everybody. As you can see, the write was now successful. And we are ready to insert the SD card into our Pi. So, let's go and uh, safely eject that disk so that we can use it. Take it out of our card reader. Insert it into our Raspberry Pi. And let's boot the Pi. There we go. Power on. And off she goes. Great. So while that's busy running, there is a uh, S terminal SSH software called Putty. It allows you to remotely connect to your device, which is also downloadable. It's open source software. Um, we need to check that our Pi has booted successfully and it's available. So, all right, the console on the Pi, uh, when it's connected to a screen, will be able to log in as a default user Pi uh, with the password Raspberry and type an ifconfig command in order to see what the local IP address is. We then enter the IP address into our PuTTY session and we should be able to connect to the Pi. But I see the Pi is still busy booting so let's hold on to that for a second. I'm going to pause this video so the Pi has enough time to uh, boot and load. Ah, there we go. Alright, so let's log in as Pi. Let's log in as the password Raspberry and off we go. Okay, so we've uh, we've logged into the Pi. 
Uh, we're going to enter the command sudo su to switch to super user. And now what we're going to do is we're going to expand the file system to full and give us the available space in the SD card. For that, we type in raspy-config. Alrighty, so we uh, entered to expand the file system. Okay, as you can see it's now expanding to use the entire card. Alright, it's resized. Uh, let's tab on over to finish. And reboot the Pi. Alright, the session will obviously disconnect because the Pi is busy rebooting. Okay, so while the Pi reboots, I'm going to pause this video and we'll continue. Okay, welcome back everybody. As you can see, the Pi is now booted and we are ready to access our new media server. So let's go to the browser and type in the IP address of our Pi, followed by the port and the web interface. And voila, there we have it our Raspberry Pi Plex Media Server. We can agree to the terms and then from here we can go and set up libraries and install. And as you can see, the current version is the most recent. The image also has the advantage that um, FileZilla has been set up, which is a uh, FTP client, which will allow you ease of access to your Pi. Again, we enter the IP address of our Pi the username default would be root, password would be raspberry, and we can connect. Great. So from here we can actually uh, attach additional drives, we can transfer movies, and then we can add them to the libraries inside of the, uh, the media player. All right, all the documentation for this, uh, very detailed step-by-step -step guides, also available from these guys online. Very good, uh, very easy to follow, uh, strongly recommended. So thank you very much for watching my video. Have a great day further.